Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Pooja and today I'm going to talk about 10 easy care house plants. So I've been collecting plants for quite some time now, uh, more aggressively fairly recently. Uh, but in the beginning when I wanted some plants, some green in my house, I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know what plants to bring home or how to care for them. I just went to the nursery, picked up plants that I thought looked pretty. Obviously some of them died. but. Uh, over time, I've learned a few things. I've also been researching about them a lot recently. So I thought I'd make this video to talk about 10 plants that I think are easy to care for. I'll tell you exactly why I think they're easy so you can figure out for yourselves if that's a plant you want to bring home uh, in case you're thinking about it. So yeah. Alright, so the first plant is going to be the Sansevieria species. So this is a plant that everybody in the houseplant community will unanimously tell you is an easy plant to care for. And here's why. This is a plant that can survive any amount of negligence. So if you're uh, a forgetful or uh, like to travel a lot or you know just busy in general this is the perfect plant for you. So it can survive any amount of underwatering is basically what I'm saying. I usually watered it once every two weeks but I've gone without watering it for like a month, month and a half when I was traveling and I came back home to a perfectly healthy plant so I think it will be able to survive more time uh, without watching and as far as overwatering is concerned like I am a chronic overwaterer I like to go around my house just watering my plants I find it therapeutic I don't know my plants don't obviously but this one has definitely survived that as far as lighting is concerned this is a plant that can do really well in low light conditions so if you have a dark corner that you want to decorate with a plant perfect plant and it can also survive bright direct sunlight not a lot of plants can do that they usually begin to burn but this one actually sat in my south facing window with direct afternoon sun for like a month and a half, two months and it showed no signs of stress, no burns, nothing. And it is also a very low feeder, you don't have to fertilize it. The first two years I had it actually, I did not fertilize it at all and recently I've been fertilizing it every two months in the summer months just because I'm fertilizing the rest of my plants, I was like might as well. So yeah, that is why this is super easy and I would highly, highly, highly recommend it. Uh, and the best part about this plant is it has so many different varieties. So this is the Sansevieria zelanica, I think that's how you say it. It's a Trifasiera zelanica. And I also have this guy which is a Sansevieria laurentii. And I also have a Sansevieria moonshine. And there are a lot more different varieties out there. So you have so many options to choose from. Or you can bring them all home which is what I want to do. But yeah, the second plant is going to be pothos, specifically the golden pothos. I don't want to talk about the other ones because I haven't had them for too long. So this is a gorgeous vining plant. So you can hang it from your ceiling. You can, you know, put it up on your bookshelf and it'll trail for you. It has a uh, really pretty uh, heart shaped leaves and really pretty, I use pretty too many times, but it has pretty yellow variegation on it. Uh, and again, a plant that can survive negligence. So if you're forgetful, you travel a lot, you're busy, perfect plant for you. Uh, it can survive underwatering, and by that I mean short periods of no water at all, it'll be fine. It can also survive overwatering. I actually have this in a pot with no drain holes, so that kind of speaks to how little care I give for it. And this is a plant that will tell you if it needs a drink. It'll the leaves will begin to curl and droop. So you don't have to worry about keeping a watering schedule. Uh, and as far as lighting is concerned, it can survive low light. So you can put it in a dark corner, it'll be fine. I'm not super sure about how it'll do in bright direct sunlight, but I do think that it'll start to show brown edges. So if you see brown edges, it's probably getting a little too much light. So that's one tip there. And it is a light feeder. You don't have to worry about fertilizing it. But if you want big leaves, uh, I would recommend fertilizing it. I've been fertilizing it and I'm beginning to see better, bigger leaves. Uh, so yeah, overall, a plant that I think is very hard to kill and would recommend this as well. So the third plant is going to be my Janet Craig Dracaena. So specifically the Janet Craig because I've had a couple of other Dracaenas and they're a little more temperamental, I think. I don't know. So this one is a baby from uh, my mama plant which is I think about 4 feet tall and a little hard to carry so I will insert a picture here. Uh, one of my oldest plants, one of the plants that I brought home and I had no idea what I was doing so it kind of speaks to how easy it is. Uh, so for watering, it actually prefers underwatering. Uh, I water this every 2 weeks I think but I've also gone longer without watering it and it's done fine. And for overwatering, uh, I wouldn't recommend it. I mean I wouldn't recommend it for any plant but specifically this one because uh, 
it is very susceptible to root rot. Uh, so if you are overwater it once in a while, it's fine. But if you do it a lot, it'll probably die on you. And again, a low light plant, it actually does better for me in low light conditions over you know bright light conditions. Uh, and again, a light feeder. In fact, when I actually fed it, when I gave it some fertilizer, uh, my regular, I think Jack's fertilizer is what I use. I'll link it below. It started getting brown edges, so I stopped it. But I did repot it to new with newer soil, so it's probably doing well because you know it got newer, better nutrients with the newer soil. But I think this is a plant that can actually go without repotting ever. I mean, don't come at me, plant people, but that's what I think. It'll do fine. So my fourth plant is going to be the Diffenbachia, uh, more commonly known as the dumb cane. I'm specifically talking about the snow variety. I think that's what it's called. Uh, I've had a couple of the others and again they've been temperamental so specifically this one is very easy uh, it's very uh, gorgeous too it has really pretty foliage I think so I'm gonna be really quick with this one because it's that easy it has survived under watering it has survived over watering it has done really well for me in uh, bright indirect light it's been giving me these new babies uh, but I think it does okay in low light conditions as well. It probably won't be popping up new leaves. Uh, and I do fertilize it once every three weeks, I think, with my uh, regular Jack's fertilizer. But I don't know. I think it'll be fine if you don't do it. But I don't know. I'm not very sure about that. So yeah, another super easy plant. My next plant is going to be the Peace Lily. This is actually a really gorgeous plant. It will flower for you if you give it the right conditions. Uh, I will get to that in a second. But it's a really pretty flower. It's like white and you know it stands up tall. Anyway, as far as the care is concerned, it's fairly easy. It does prefer moist soil. So if you're an overwaterer, this might actually work well for you. Uh, but that doesn't mean that if you forget to water once in a while, it's gonna die on you. Uh, it can survive short periods without water. I've done it and it's been okay. Uh, and this can do okay in low light conditions. Uh, uh, it actually does really well in bright indirect light. So if you want it to flower for you, I would recommend that you water it every uh, five to seven days on an average, depending on the size of your plant and the pot, and put it in some bright indirect light. Uh, and I actually did not fertilize it for the first three years that I had it, and it was still giving me flowers, it was still putting out new leaves, so I think it's a light feeder, I think it'll be fine if, it, if you don't fertilize it. Uh, so yeah, another easy plant here. So the next plant is gonna be my asparagus fern. I think this is a springeri fern. So believe it or not, I got this plant a year and a half ago and it was only two inches tall. But anyway, as far as care is concerned, I think it's really easy. It's one of the easiest ferns I've had and trust me, I've had the finicky ones. Uh, but yeah, so I water this once every week. It does like moist soil, I've noticed, but I've gone without watering it for uh, I think three weeks to a month and it's done okay. It does show some yellowing when you, you know, don't water it frequently. So it's a telltale sign, I think. But you know, it does, it comes right back when you start watering it more regularly. Uh, and I think it likes bright light. It's actually sitting in a spot that gets bright direct sunlight in my house and it's doing really well. But ferns in general are supposed to be okay with uh, low light. So I think it will do well, but I don't know. I haven't done it, so I can't speak to it. And I actually never fertilized this because you know, I've had to upsize the pot on this so many times that I think the new soil is giving it the nutrients it requires every time. But yeah, I think this is another easy plant and has really pretty unique foliage. So if you want something slightly different from the rest of the plants in your home, this is perfect. So yeah, this is plant number six. So next plant I have is another fern. This is the uh, Bird's Nest Leslie fern. I think it's really pretty. I think uh, the foliage on this is very unique. Look at those tips on the leaves. So it likes moist soil. So I water this every five to seven days, but I've gone without watering it for I think a month when I forgot about it. So when you forget to water, about, water it, it does show some brown edges like you can see there. I kind of cut it off, but it's there still. Uh, so that's a telltale sign, but it'll be fine. It's not gonna die on you. And uh, for lighting, I read about it very recently that it prefers, uh, you know, partial shade. Uh, but mine is actually sitting in a bright windowsill. It also gets like a couple of hours of uh, afternoon sun and it's doing okay. So I haven't moved it because, you know, it's been sitting there for two years. Uh, so yeah, and I've actually never fertilized this in two years and it's doing okay. So yeah, I think it's very easy. <laughs> So the next plant I have is the Agrionema. I think this is more commonly known as the Chinese evergreen plant. Uh, this is the Agrionema valentine. Valentine? I don't know. 
And uh, this is the Agonema uh, Red Emerald. Very gorgeous foliage, very colorful. So if you want to pop a color, perfect one for you. I'm gonna put this down, it's heavy. Okay, care, uh, watering. I water this once every seven days, but I think it does okay if you forget to water. So irregular watering is fine with this one. And it is okay with overwatering as well, but it tells you, I will show you. So you can see some yellowing here. That's because of overwatering. So it has a pretty good telltale sign. But it hasn't gotten root rot, so I think if uh, you're an overwaterer, uh, it's a good bet. And for lighting, I have been uh, giving it bright indirect light. I haven't actually exposed this to low light conditions, so I don't know. Uh, and for um, fertilizing, I'm actually feeding it every three weeks with my Jax fertilizer. So it's been popping out new leaves very, very frequently, like once every week. So if you don't care about new growths too much, I don't think you need to fertilize it, you'll be fine. Uh, so yeah, that's why it's another easy plan. It's so pretty. So the next plant I have is the Phyllia peperomais, more commonly known as the Chinese money plant. I have no idea why. It has really pretty pancake-like foliage. It might also be known as the pancake plant actually. I don't know. Uh, this is a really popular plant right now and I can see why. It's really cute. Uh, so I've had this only for I think four or five months now. It's fairly new to my collection. So my care experience is pretty short. So I water this once every week. I don't think it'll do well with irregular watering, uh, but it does like to get bone dry between watering, I've noticed. I was not doing that before and it started showing some stress, some yellowing. Uh, and I have it in a bright, indirect uh, lighting location and it's doing well, I think. Uh, I've not put it in a dark you know, room or low light conditions, so I have no idea how it would do. Uh, and I do feed it once every three weeks and it's actually putting out a lot of new growth so I think I'm doing everything right, I don't know. So yeah, I have not been giving it any extra humidity or anything like that so that's why I think it's fairly easy. Not as easy as a snake plant but it's pretty easy. So the last plant I have for today's video is my Raphidophora tetrasperma, also known as the mini monstera. I love the fenestrations on these leaves. Uh, so I actually got this as two four inch cuttings and it's been growing so quickly. It's been putting out new leaves every week and it's pretty rewarding to watch actually. Anyway, as far as uh, care is concerned, it's fairly easy. Not as easy as a snake plant or the peace lily but still pretty easy I think. I do water it once every week. Uh, I have gone longer without watering it and it does okay. I haven't overwatered this plant specifically but I have overwatered uh, Monstera Deliciosa and the roots rotted pretty quickly so I think this would do the same. This will probably not be okay with overwatering and uh, I do have this in a bright indirect uh, lighting situation I have not put this in uh, low lighting conditions so I don't know how it would do and as far as feeding is concerned I do fertilize it once every three weeks uh, so yeah and actually it is getting some humidity it has been sitting with other plants that need humidity so I don't know if it's actually helping with its growth so overall I think it's an easy plant uh, especially considering how pretty it is so those were the 10 plants I had for you today. Uh, if you have any questions, comment below. I will be answering them. So one thing to note is that a lot of how your plants do depend on the conditions you give them. And sometimes what works for me might not work for you. So you might have to play around a little bit. That said, uh, a lot of the plants that I mentioned are commonly known as easy plants. So it will be a good starting point if you're thinking about getting a plant. And yeah, that's it. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to like and subscribe. And thank you for watching.